In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create some 3D sports balls in Adobe After Effects. Let's begin. Hello everyone, my name is Elliot, also known as Eliano, and today I'm going to be giving you a quick tutorial on how to create some 3D sports balls in After Effects. These are pretty easy to create and use within After Effects, and they can add a little bit of detail to any sports motion graphics animations that you may want to create. Step 1. Finding your textures. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the website link in the description below and you'll be brought to a page that contains these textures. Or alternatively, you could Google search 3D sports ball maps or map patterns and you'll find flat patterns that look like this. Simply select them and save them into a folder. And now you've got your texture for your ball. Step 2. How to make your textures 3D in After Effects. Now with a brand new project file opened up in After Effects, you're going to want to drag your chosen texture file into your project tab here. And then you need to drag that file to this icon here to create a brand new composition which fits the exact size of the texture file. Feel free to rename the comp to make it more clearer. And then you're going to want to create another composition to your desired size. In my case, I want it to be square, so I'll make it 1080 pixels on both the height and width and make it 25 frames a second. I'm going to call this comp Tennis Ball 3D. Now once that's been created, drag your texture comp into your new comp and it should appear in your timeline like so. Now we need to go to the effects tab and add an effect called CC Sphere, which as you can guess, is what turns your texture comp into a 3D sphere. Simply drag it onto your comp layer or double tap the effect with your layer selected in the timeline. And there you go, you now have a 3D sphere ready for you to use in After Effects. Step three. How to control your sphere. Now you've made the ball, you're going to want to control it. Now I personally want this tennis ball to have more of a cartoony, flat coloured look, so I'm going to go to the effects tab on our texture layer and I'm going to click on the drop down arrow on the light tab here. From here I'm going to alter the light intensity to zero and then I'm going to open up the shading tab by clicking the drop down arrow and change the ambient number to 100, set the diffuse also to 100 and change the specular, roughness, metal and reflective all down to zero or as close as. Now to increase the size of your sphere, you're going to want to click on the radius number here. By increasing or decreasing the size of the radius, you'll be making the sphere larger or smaller. For the size of this tennis ball, I'm going to make it 98. And now with the look of my sphere ready, I'm ready to control it. Now say for example you want the ball to move like it does in this Michael Jordan animation I made a few years ago. How exactly do you do it? Well, you simply go to the rotation tab on your effects controls in your texture layer. This will give you three areas of rotation control. Rotation X, Y, and Z. And these numbers when increased or decreased will rotate the sphere either on the X, Y, or Z axis. The X axis when rotated will move your sphere's texture up and down. The Y axis when rotated will move the sphere's texture left or right. And the Z axis when rotated will move your sphere either clockwise or counterclockwise. And to animate any of these rotations, you just need to click on the stopwatch on each tab. This will then create a keyframe on your layer, which you can reveal by double tapping U with the layer selected in the timeline. And then you simply just need to change the number with your cursor dragged across the timeline to a different section. In the case of this ball, I'm going to set a keyframe at one second in the timeline. And because I want it to loop, I'm just going to change the first number here. By changing this number from 0 to 2, I'll be making the sphere rotate 2 times fully. And then by rendering only the first second of this animation, you'll see a perfect loop of our rotation. And this works for all three of the rotation controls, and if you want to, you can have all three moving in your animation at the same time. And to control the movement of your sphere, you could use the offset numbers here to move the position of your sphere, but I personally feel this limits the movements you can do within After Effects. One way to change the movement is to attach the sphere to a placeholder object, like I did in this Michael Jordan animation, by just pin whipping your 3D layer to the placeholder layer. Or say for example you want the ball to bounce in a spot, you can just add keyframes to the layer's properties, like you would with a shape layer. First move the anchor point to the centre bottom of your layer, then click on the layer and just click the P button to bring up the position properties. Then right click the position settings and click the separate dimensions option. This is because as we'll only be having the ball bounce up and down in the same spot, we only need to control the Y axis. And then create a keyframe on the first frame and last frame of your animation with the ball at the bottom of the screen. And then in the middle of these two keyframes, create a keyframe with your ball at the top of the screen where you want it to bounce to. And then by previewing this animation, it's a little bit basic. So why don't we spruce it up a little bit? 
Right click the middle keyframe and turn it into an easy ease keyframe. Looks much better right, but we can improve it just a little bit further by clicking on this icon with the middle keyframe selected. Now here we see our graph editor and just by changing these lines a little bit, we can make the balls bounce look much better. Now let's make the ball look a little bit more 3D by changing the rotations without adding any keyframes yet. I quite like how this looks. And now with the ball bouncing up and down in the same spot, I'm just going to change the X rotation on our 3D layer. And then just like with our position keyframes, we'll add a keyframe on both the first and last frames of our animation. But on the last keyframe, we're going to change the first keyframe number here to how many rotations we want it to be. In this case, I'm going to change it to two. And then in the middle keyframe, I'm going to copy and paste the first keyframe and change this rotation amount to one. So we'll have done a full rotation as it bounces up. And just like before, we'll easy ease the middle keyframe and alter it a little bit using the speed graph. And now to make it look even more cartoony, we can add some squash and stretch keyframes to our animation. Just click the S button with the layer selected and this will bring up the scale settings and make three keyframes in line with our previous ones. Now go to the first keyframe and click this locked unlink the height and width scales of our layer. Now on this first keyframe, the ball is just landed on the ground and this will be where the ball makes its most gravitational impact. So I'm going to make it stretch a little bit by changing this number here from 100 to 105 and then make another keyframe right afterwards and change it back to 100. And then in between the second and third keyframe, I'm going to alternate it to make it look a little bit thinner as the ball rises up by changing this number to 95. Then I'll add a keyframe between the middle and last keyframe here with this number set to 82. And then copy and paste the first keyframe in place of your last keyframe. And then I'll add a keyframe just before the final one with both numbers back to 100. And now your animation will be bouncing in a perfect loop. Now you could copy and paste these keyframes to fill this composition in order to have it last longer than that one second. Or you could add a little expression to have all of these keyframes repeat. Just click on all the keyframes with stopwatches whilst holding down the Alt key which will allow you to then type in an expression here. In this case, we're going to type in the expression loop out. And now all your keyframes will be looping throughout your whole animation. And to complete the cartoony style that I want within my animations, I will simply add a solid layer with a color for my background. And then to add an outline to my ball to make it more easier to see, I'll go to the effects panel and add the simple choker effect. And by changing the number here in the effects tab, you can see it'll add a black border to my ball layer. And then I'll also add a noise layer for good effect with the blend mode set to multiply. Then I will add an adjustment layer with posterized time added at 12.5 frames per second, as well as a turbulent displace effect with me altering the size and amount settings here, as well as adding a small expression to the evolution tab by alt clicking the stopwatch and adding the expression time times 100 and that completes my animation. And that's the end of our tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate all of the lovely comments and support I've been getting recently. We've just hit over 300 subscribers on this channel, which is absolutely mental. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please make sure to click the like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to follow me on Instagram to check out all of the other motion design bits I've done over the years. And if there's anything that you see on there that you find really interesting and want me to discuss in a tutorial or a project breakdown, let me know and I'll probably make a video on it. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Cheers.